We are slowly but surely making it towards the end of the season and uh, the league season is going horribly wrong. But the cup season is still alive and we're in the FA Cup fifth round today. And I'm not going to comment on rumours that I've picked a cup game in this episode to get away from the troubles that I'm having in the league at the moment. In the last episode, we took on former FA Cup winners Wigan Athletic at home, a team that were currently struggling in mid-table and we drew them 1-1 uh, in a game that we really should have won because uh, our lead at the top of the table started to get cut quite considerably. And in the recent games after that have actually seen us lose top spot. You you know that sort of thing that I'm doing at the moment where I'm lowering expectations gradually so that later on into the episode I can pleasantly surprise people. Yeah, I feel like I do that every episode. To be fair. Now, following that match against Wigan Athletic, we took on Coventry City, a team that were in the top two with us uh, at this stage of the season. And uh, we went 1-0 down in the first half as Jake Hasty uh, scored after 15 minutes. But then Noel Ennis equalised and scored once again this season uh, as he managed to pull it level and we drew 1-1 again. And then Jack Payne scored his first goal for the club as we beat Warsaw away by two goals to one in the following match. Noel Ennis scored once again this season as we beat Forest Green 3-1 in the following home game. But then when we took on relegation threat in Accrington Stanley at home, Kyode gave him the lead from the penalty spot after six minutes but then Alex Samuel equalized a couple minutes later but we managed to drop points and then lose top spot in this game. Alex Samuel made it 2-2 two and two in the following game against Newport County who are bottom of the league as we ran out 2-0 winners and after we went 1-0 down to Gillingham within the first 10 minutes in the first half uh, Noel Ennis then pulled it back for us and equalized later on in the first half and then completed his hat trick uh, later on in the game and scored his first ever hat trick for the club. I mean the guy's back now the guy is back. It's only taken him six months in the season to actually start firing away now but we do take on Norwich City in FA Cup fifth round in this episode, a team that are currently chasing Europe in the Premier League, whilst we're struggling to get out of League One, so it's clearly a big mismatch. So we'll start off with some transfer news, and George Moncur has left the club to join League Two Grimsby, who are currently battling for promotion, and uh, he was a good player for me, but I had to give him off the wage bill, because I told you in the last episode that we have a wage cap I have to adhere to. I've just found out as well that in real life, the EFL have now abandoned that, so that's fantastic for me. I can't wait to get out of this shit league. And the free and up of those wages also allow me to sign a new player. But as I did mention, we have signed a new player, and and uh, hopefully coming in to improve our defensive ranks is uh, right back D'Amico Dehaney. He joins us for 100 grand from Huddersfield Town, a team that I've obviously managed before. And I have managed this player before in the Premier League. Uh, so he's a pretty decent player to have on the right back position. Obviously, I've got two players that play in that position already, but I haven't got much depth in that area. Also just found out that the day before I signed him, he managed to get injured in training. Fantastic. So I've now signed an injured player. So a couple of days after the Wigan game, uh, Carlo Ancelotti wasn't happy because I wasn't playing his lone player, Ben Knight. And I've started to get him into the team more you know i'm starting playing him in his real position and uh, you know there's other players in form so i've got to play the players in form uh carl ancelotti's recalled him great so that's now the second lone player in two episodes who i've now had recalled they really just don't want me to get promoted do they so i had some issues when it came to registering Demiko dehaney because uh, you know he's injured and he's also not registered and i do need to register him for the club uh, but the problem is that we have a maximum squad salary which i'm now over so after getting rid of a couple of players and working things around i still couldn't register him so i've now signed a player who signed injured and now can't play for the rest of the season because i can't register him because of the salary cap i beg your pardon I beg your pardon. What an utter waste of time that was. Camo Mizek was also under some interest from Derby County and they offered me 150 grand, which I was not going to accept, and asked them for 400k, and then they withdrew their offer. An absolutely brilliant negotiation tactic by me. Also found out that after the service I've given Wickham in the last three years, I'm still not on the favoured personnel list, but Ryan Allsop is. I mean, the bloke single-handedly got me relegated from the championship last season. I'll tell you what, if I'm not on there in two years' time, I'm definitely going to resign. For the first time in this series as well, I decided to ask the board to upgrade our training facilities and they finally accepted it which means that it's going to take about five months to complete in the next season where we will probably be bottom of the championship if we can get out of this shithole of league one now after beating forest green 3-1 i checked the social media to see uh, how well the fans received our you know new attacking style that i've brought to the club and lucy edge forgot that we were playing i mean cheers for the support lucy i have to resonate with her a bit because it does actually happen sometimes you know she forgot to watch us win a game i forgot to upload another video again you know we're just all the same really now in some other news as well wayne rooney has been hired as the black and Rovers manager and he was in charge of Sheffield Wednesday last season when we were in the championship but then lost his job recently and has now been hired as the Blackburn manager and I looked at his win percentage and even mine isn't as low as that. The blokes lost 50% of his games. I mean if anything that is actually quite an achievement to be fair. The 5-2 win over Gillingham when Niall Ennis scored a hat-trick also saw me unlock three achievements in the Steam workshop which is the first time it's happened and it's taken me until the 10th of February to do that. And now I've shown you how far behind I am on the videos. What are you retarded? 
And talking of his goal scoring exploits, Niall Ennis also got 4,200 a bonus for reaching 15 league goals this season. Honestly, I'm playing and paying the bloke too much. And also some more Niall Ennis news is he's currently on the verge of breaking the record for the most amount of man on the matches in the season. Aside Jenkinson on social media said he's missed the consistency, isn't he? I mean, I'm not even going to answer that question. And the fact he's put never has a bad game at the end of the tweet it says a lot about the man. Well, someone's not been watching all the games this season, have they? But now we move into our game against Norwich City at home, a game that I've been looking forward to because we haven't really had a difficult game in the FA Cup yet this season so I kind of wanted to test myself against the very best and unfortunately Manchester United, Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool weren't available so we're gonna have to go with Norwich. So the back line stays pretty much the same as it has done in the last few episodes with Mizek a starting off in goal, uh, Trevor Clark left back, Ken Lock a Knight playing centre back and Kane Ramsey playing right back. On midfield three see Sean Goss playing in that defensive midfield role again with Jack Payne and Adam Phillips playing ahead of him in deep line playmaker roles. And finally, our front three are probably the most informed front three in League One, uh, despite the fact that my defence isn't as good. Uh, so, Ike Ogbo, Alex Samuel, and Nar Ennis will lead the line for us. It most likely is the strongest team I could have named. And, uh, well, let's hope it's a good game, because if we get knocked out, then I'm going to have to focus on the league again, which I've already mentioned I'm really struggling in. Well, this is a tough game for me. I mean, look at their squad compared to mine. They've got Eddie Nketiah playing up front for them, Emi is playing on the wing, and Ben Gibson's in defence. And if anyone remembers the Huddersfield series, which I assume a lot of you do remember, they're clearly going to concede with Ben Gibson in their defence. I mean, looking at their bench as well, they've got Matteo Musacchio on the bench. And they've also got Olivier Nincham on the bench. Wait, hold on, no one tell AVB he might resign again. But I do have faith in my players. I do think we can actually pull off a result here. If we play well, and we have done quite a lot this season, I think we have a chance. And also, if we could go as long as possible without conceding a goal, I think we do stand a chance. Now, I had to set up the team to play a counter-attacking style, and we managed to get a chance after 26 minutes as we hit Norwich on the counter, and the ball fell to Trevor Clark on the left-hand side. He played it inside for Sean Goss, who laid it off for E.K. Ogbo, who had his shot blocked, and Norwich managed to clear. A couple of minutes later, Todd Cantwell cut inside from the left wing, and then played the ball to the edge of the box for Faustino and Jorin, who then hit a ball which only went over the bar. But as we were approaching half-time, Norwich started ramping up the pressure and the ball found its way to Marcus Edwards on the edge of the box and he managed to cut inside and then fire the ball just wide. And that same man again was then set up by Emi Buendia a couple of minutes later and it, the same result happened as he fired from the edge of the box and it went wide again. It wasn't all Norwich though as we managed to fashion another chance later on into the half and some good link-up play between Nar Ennis and Ike Ogbo saw the latter fire a shot straight at the goalkeeper. And then the biggest chance of the half fell for Norwich as Todd Cantwell was played in by Max Ahrens found himself one-on-one -on -one with our goalkeeper uh, but I then proceeded to hit the post when it looked easy to score to be fair and then on the stroke of half time Eddie Nketiah got the ball about 35 yards out slipped it through to Emi Buendia who then ran in my goalkeeper and then fired Norwich into the lead see every fibre in my body wants to say that is undeserved but even I can't say that so at half time we were 1-0 down to Norwich but we weren't doing too badly we fashioned a few chances they weren't really troubling us other than the goal I mean there is all the chance we can still uh, get back into this game so I said to the boys at half time I said we have a chance still we're still in the game we can still keep the tie all we need to do is get through the next 15 minutes without conceding and we have a great chance of winning the game and so they went out there and then within four minutes they conceded again cheers lads with us being 2-0 down and half an hour left on the clock, I decided to refresh things and brought on Dan Londolu for Ike Ogbo on the left-hand side and then sent on Antif to Songwe to play a right-back in place of Kane Ramsey. And we were starting to up the pressure a little bit and Alex Samuel had a shot blocked after Trevor Clark's good play down the left-hand side. And I decided to change the formation so Alex Samuel went up front uh, to play alongside Noel Ennis uh, while Liam Cullen came on for Sean Goss as we went for treble two. Norwich had a big chance to kill the game as Anjurin played a lovely ball into the box for Marcus Edwards who headed it over the bar. And if they had scored that it would have definitely been game over and then with a couple of minutes left on the clock Trevor Clark got a throw in on the left hand side played it into Dan Nalondaloo who flicked it on and Alex Samuel halved the deficit and then only a minute later within the same highlight Ante Tsongui then dispossessed the Norwich attackers and then played a long ball over the top for Nar Ennis to run through on goal and fire the ball wide for God's sake that was that was the chance that was the chance and then finally in injury time we got one more chance as Ante Tsongui got the ball on the right hand side put the ball into the box for Dan Nalondaloo at the back post to head it over the bar great cheers lads and unfortunately, that was the last highlight of the game and Norwich ended up winning by two goals to one and progressing to the next round of the FA Cup. The fact we were shit for 80 minutes and then somehow nearly managed to come back and draw 2-2 and force the game into extra time says a lot about my team. I mean, the, the fact that we're shit for 80 minutes and we can still probably pull off a result in the last 10 minutes isn't going to take us very far. Oh, well, back to the league now. Let's see uh, if I can bottle that as well. Take it. 